My question is uh, also for the government leader in the Senate. By all accounts, Lieutenant Colonel Eleanor Taylor has been a distinguished member of the Canadian Forces over many years of service. She commanded an infantry company in Afghanistan. She was a key planner for the military security operations for the Vancouver 2010 Olympics. Yet last week, she submitted her resignation from the reserves, saying she was sickened and disgusted by ongoing reports of sexual misconduct in the forces. She believes Operation Honour should drop its name, as it has lost all meaning. Her resignation letter is deeply disturbing to read, as I cannot imagine how hard it was for her to write it. Senator Gold, how many more talented leaders who simply want to serve our country will be driven out of the Canadian forces, not only due to harassment they have faced or witnessed, but also the inability or unwillingness of your government to deal with this crisis? Senator Gold. Well, thank you for your question. The situation that has come to light is deplorable. And the government commends the women who have come forward with their own stories and understands how difficult it is and must be for them. The government appreciates their openness. This will help pave the way for a better future uh, for the Canadian Armed Forces and indeed the entire defense team. As I mentioned on the other uh, day, uh, the government also recognizes that change and cultural change in an organization uh, such as the military is complex and takes time. The government is uh, determined and asserts that the time for patience is over. The I'm advised that the government is looking at all options currently to change that culture in the Canadian Armed Forces in order to provide a safe and an inclusive environment for all personnel, regardless of rank or position, whether civilian or of military status, as well, colleagues, to ensure that there are tangible supports for those who come forward with allegations of assault or harassment. Martin. Yes, um, Leader, with all due respect, those words sound quite hollow. And when we are looking at the leadership at the very top, uh, who knew about the former Chief of Defence Staff, uh, General Vance's misconduct for three years, the Prime Minister, Minister Sajjan, they knew, but they did next to nothing. Today we see the result of their inaction, the resignation of a highly respected member of the military who says she believes the scope of the problem has yet to be exposed. So Senator Gold, your government has badly failed our women and men in uniform. Why is there a total lack of responsibility? Why does the Prime Minister still have confidence in the Minister of Defence? Is it because the Prime Minister can't dismiss the Minister because they both failed to act for three years? Senator Gold. <clears throat> Thank you for your question. And, and nothing that I'm about to say in any way belittles the problem that has been identified and that needs to be addressed in military culture. But colleague, when respectfully, it's simply not true that the government has done nothing. Major steps have been taken, that they have not been fully successful, and that the work, much work remains to be done uh, is a sad uh, but inescapable fact. The government is committed to looking at all options to improve the situation for those in the military, to improve the ways in which uh, allegations of mistreatment, assault, harassment can and, and will be dealt with. Uh, and I'm convinced that the government, uh, and I want to assert that the government is taking this extremely seriously. Uh, these are not hollow words. Uh, this is a serious engagement of this government. 